All right, guys, so you're gonna need to remove your ignition lock cylinder. It's a lot of reasons you may wanna need to uh, replace it or to pull it out. I'm gonna give you a couple examples right here. Your turn signal, windshield wiper, multifunction switch, which also houses your uh, flashers. This switch will require removal of the lower um, steering wheel bezel right here. And you're gonna need to remove your uh, tilt bar here. You're gonna need to remove your ignition lock cylinder in its entirety. In order to get this lower plastic cover off, you've got a Phillips screw here, a Phillips screw, let's get a little dark back there, um, a Phillips screw back here, and you've got another one right here, just behind your tilt. Now it helps if you uh, tilt the wheel up so you can get full access to these. Um, those are Phillips screws under there. And the way you remove your ignition lock, which is probably the first thing you need to be taking out um, to do any work on the multifunction switch uh, or changing out the lock cylinder itself, or if you've got one of these bad shifter knobs um, where the overdrive button gets stuck or doesn't operate properly, well, first thing you need to do is disconnect your negative battery cable. The second thing you're gonna need to do is turn your tilt all the way up to make things easier to get to. Put your ignition key in, get you a small, uh, when I say small, I mean long, but a thin Phillips screwdriver, and stick it in this hole right here. In fact, this is the wrong screwdriver. I've got a smaller one right here. Um, this one right here. You're going to stick it in at an angle facing your ignition lock cylinder. And it takes a little playing around before you find it, but you'll know it when you hit it. There's a little ball in there. All right, so we're going to try to do this. Turn your ignition cylinder to the on position. Push your screwdriver up in there with firm pressure. And if you have trouble finding it, barely hold the screwdriver in here and turn the key and you'll fill and you can see the screwdriver barely move. Give it a good push. There we go. Some of these have been in here a while and they may not want to come out. But when you're done, this is the finished product. You have your ignition cylinder right here and it'll pop right back in. Um, so here you have it. This is your ignition cylinder. And just go ahead and set that to the side out of the way and you are uh, one step closer. Um, next, go ahead and pull off your tilt arm right here. It just unscrews, you know, lefty-loosey, and it's even got a notch in it right here. So if you need to grip onto it with some pliers or something, there's an actually notch designed um, to do just that. Next, we've got uh, three Phillips screws we've got to remove. One is right here, simple enough. Don't lose your screws. Easier said than done, I know. Still not out. There we go. And the third one is right above. Uh, this one is for the lock cylinder. The one at the very top is actually your Phillips screw right here. Uh, guys, please, there it is, it fell on the floor there. Please remember to uh, disconnect your negative battery cable when you're working with your vehicle's electrical components. It's just a safe thing to do. You can pull this, uh, this bottom portion off here, and you can actually see up under here, um, this right here is where your ignition lock uh, little ball show you right here that ball down at the bottom which is uh, uh, right here that ball pops right in there so you'll know you have a better idea of where to slide that thing when it's time to put it back in um, now you could pull this uh, sorry 
go ahead and put your uh, trusty tilt arm back in there so that you can move your steering wheel around. And I know it's dark. Sorry about that. You know, I do what I can when I can, you know. I'm sure a lot of you know how that is. Let's go ahead and uh, pull it down the rest of the way. I've got to get this out of the way here because I have something mounted that way. All right, so next, grab your screwdriver, go up along under here, pry it out, come up along over here as best you can, pop it out over here. You may at this point be able to get to it with your fingers and just pry the rest of this sucker out. I was hoping we wouldn't have to, but um, at this point, your ignition is still in the on position, which gives you the ability to move your shift lever as you need to get it out of the way to uh, undo all this. And it's just a matter of uh, negotiating your plastic trim out of the dash here, which, you know, obviously can be easier said than done. Got to work, work it out. There you go. And hopefully you can remember how you got it out so that uh, it's a little bit easier to get back in. Now pull this uh, upper trim piece off here. And definitely avoid breaking anything. And this thing will pull off around your... Uh, just like this. It will pull off over your shifter arm and then it just goes right back down there all right so go ahead and pull this sucker off and this gives you full access to uh everything you've got everything that you may want to work on under here your shifter arm which mine is broken and i'm getting ready to replace that along with my combination switch everything works on it with the exception of it will not uh, shut off automatically when you turn a corner all right, so your multifunction switch needs to be replaced. You're gonna do everything that we've already shown you, gone over, there's a bolt right there. That brass colored one's gotta come out and then there's one directly above it, right there that has to come out. Uh, what I'm using to accomplish this is a, uh, a quarter inch ratchet and the size is T20. All right, so we'll come up under here There you go, just give it a quick break. Um, you got another one right up here. It's difficult to see, but it's there, right there. Get it up in there, give it a quick turn. It's loose. That's pretty simple, right? And just come back under here with your ratchet, or with your extension, with your little T20 bit. Turn that sucker out. Again, fell on the floor. I'm fine with that. Just don't, uh, don't lose them. You're going to need these pieces later. All right. Looks like this one is out as well. Let's try to get it out of there. There we go. Put it on the floor as well. And looky there, your multifunction switch comes out. It's pretty simple. I've already got another one that I pulled from the junkyard as well right here. This is what it looks like when it's pulled off of the vehicle just like that you've got some connectors that we're going to uh, have to get to this is the back side of it that's what it's going to look like so I'm going to set the light back up here move this out of the way get our flathead screwdriver which comes in exceptionally handy when we're doing all this we're going to try to turn this so we can get access to all the all the wires. Now, I'm gonna let you know right now, this top one right here has a clip right here, but it's also got a clip on the bottom side, which you can barely see, but it's there. Um, try not to break these, guys. This one right here is a clip on this side and a clip on this side as well. Again, we're gonna try real hard not to break those. So unfortunately, I'm gonna need both of my hands for this, but I'm gonna get a screwdriver up under here and just barely 
about right here where it lifts and pushes at the same time and I'm gonna get under it and do the same thing all right guys I'm gonna be straight up with you just take some uh, <laughs> some skill but you got a clip up on here up on the top here and then on the bottom side you got another one this one's a lot easier because it's on the side but this one on the bottom I didn't break them so we got our new switch right here and you know the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and plug it in now obviously the hazard lamp goes towards the top all right so we'll uh, go ahead and get these plugged in all right so we got the wires back in yeah, it's pretty simple uh, they plug in and then they fit nicely into this plastic uh, harness right here um, you can worry more about that once you get everything lined up the wires will just slide back into place right there make them nice and neat again um, now it doesn't do any good to do that until you get this nice and centered and lined up. You'll feel it. It clicks in, but it won't stay there. You're going to have to use both hands. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take this video and pause it, and we're going to get these two, uh, two screws started. All right, so if anybody told you this was going to be a simple job, um, they lied. It's not that difficult, but I definitely wouldn't call it simple either. So, uh, go ahead and tighten these things back up. Remember, you got one on the top here. You got another one down here on the bottom, right here. You don't want to over tighten these because, you know, they're attaching a bunch of plastic. So, it's plugged in, it's mounted, tuck your wires down in there like I said earlier, and uh, the rest of it's a piece of cake, guys. You've got your uh, switch changed out. Just to be sure, come under the hood here and you can reconnect your battery before you go putting everything back together. You know, make sure that your airbag doesn't blow up and... Oh look, the flashers are working. It's a good sign. All right, so we'll uh, turn signals work. Windshield wipers work. Intermittent. I hear the motor working for the so the brights. Alright, so the multifunction switch works. Now at this point, um, we can go ahead and start buttoning this thing up. We've got your lower and your upper. And it looks like, sorry I got them backwards there. This is actually your upper right here, a little on the dirty side. But um, this will go on next, fit it around your uh, switch right there, your uh, lever, and get it nice and centered up on both sides. It's got little grooves that it should uh, nicely fit into. have to move things around just a little bit until it's finally where it wants to be but uh, you can see it's got these protruding prongs which help guide it into the uh, I can't really see down in there but it will help guide it to the proper holes you just got to uh, fight with it until it decides it wants to work with you. Alright guys, so if you're lucky, <laughs> if you're really lucky, once you finagle this uh, top piece on, you gotta come to the other underside here, and there are a little, uh, on the corners here, there are little bitty tabs that will help lock the bottom and top in place. On both sides, you can see them in here, sort of. Uh, 
it takes some work guys you're gonna need both hands to do this go ahead and fit those together and then put your screws back where we got them out and in case you forgot all right you've got a screw here here and here okay remember this one was for the uh, the key you don't put a screw in there Phillips 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 all right guys so try not to drop your lock cylinder um, remember this ball down at the bottom right here has its place in this groove right here all right so you want that ball to match up all right and when it looks like it's in there turn the key off and it shouldn't wiggle out anymore now this cover is going to take a little bit of work it's not going to go back on particularly easy I'm not going to lie to you um, get ready for that um, it took me a few minutes to get it back on but you know with two hands it's definitely doable uh, next you're probably going to want to put your uh, tilt um, lever back in there and of course I've got it laying around somewhere in here and we'll find it and get that back in all right we got that back in next we'll try to uh, fit this piece back on here without damaging anything and it may be necessary to move the shift lever down so you can get in here uh, if nothing else it makes it a lot easier and pull the shift lever back up get uh get everything lined up where it needs to be and go ahead and pop the tabs back in and we can lift the tilt back up again come under here and make sure that we got everything lined up under here at the bottom as well everything looks good and we're almost done guys now I'll be coming back later and replacing this entire top piece because this this thing is just brittle and it's totally falling apart I do want to get that fixed but uh last step guys come back down here to this it's got some tabs all right it's got one right there a metal prong right there all right it's gonna fit nicely into there and there's one right here it's gonna fit nicely into there so very gently lift it up and lock it in there and then start bolting it down again wanted to make a real quick correction you can still put this on first but leave the bottom popped out because these tabs on the bottom here actually go in to this bottom piece here okay so put this in first and put these tabs in after you get it in all right now that you've got this piece in here you're gonna need to screw it in right there and right there and don't forget the two bigger ones the 5 16ths right there and right there all right guys so put everything back together connect your negative battery terminal and don't leave it loose I'm gonna leave it loose right now just for uh, testing purposes go ahead and close this up and assuming everything goes good when we get back from our test drive I will uh, go ahead and tighten down so we got her all buttoned back up as you can see so uh, we'll find out what's going to happen now.